That's right, everybody. Today, we're going to be surviving 300 days in an ocean-only world. We're continuing on this series, slowly building it up, making it more and more OP. I'm talking farms. I'm talking villagers. If you guys go on to enjoy this one, make sure you guys smash that like button before me. Hit subscribe. Join the Paul GG army. And here's to 300 days in an ocean-only world. But before we get into today's video, guys, I want to thank today's sponsor, myself, along with Makeship, because I've partnered up with Makeship to create another plushie. This just isn't any old plushie, guys. It's a Paul GG plushie V2, and he's pretty unique because he's got his own Minecraft boat. He's in the brown pearl, ready to sail the seven seas, and he's also detachable. So you can be able to play with him outside of the boat, make him do whatever sleep face down in the boat. Now, I know a lot of people missed out on the first plushie that I did with makeshift. So this is another opportunity for you guys. I love this thing. It's super cute all the way around. This is my little mans right here. And makeshift is a fully crowdfunded service. So basically you need to sell 200 of them for them to go into production for everyone to then get their plushies. So if we don't sell 200 of them, well, then I'm the only one in the world that has this amazing plushie. And that would kind of suck. I'll be honest because it's awesome. I figured putting them in the brown pearl is a great tribute to the ocean world and the what the Ocean World series has really brought to Minecraft. And I feel like the brown pearl is just quite the statement. So go check out the first link top of the description for you guys to be able to go get yourself a Paul GG V2 plushie. And now onto the rest of the video. And welcome back to the Ocean World. We're starting this off on day 201, kinda. Uh, the sun's setting again. Like in the last video, I, I had to get uh, thumbnail assets. And um, so yeah, it's gonna be more like day 202. Uh, Alrighty, the bright and shiny sun coming up on day 202. We got a lot of things we need to do in this world, like a lot of upgrades. Last thing we did was create a potato farm, which I didn't really 100% finish, I realized, because I do need to build like a little way down into these chests. Hmm. 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 It's not quite working the way I thought it would because I built this to be a two block uh, center, but this is a one block center. It's kind of off center, if you guys didn't notice driving me insane then i also want to surround it in glass so i'm actually gonna need a little bit more sand oh nope we're good we have we have plenty of glass then which now that i think about it i actually have a much much better idea for how to hide this terrible mistake and that is to put it on the back side where no one's gonna be looking at it there we go now we got our stairs that'll go down to the chest all i gotta do is basically surround this entire thing in glass oh my god not like this not like this. Yeah, I didn't have my shield equipped. We're good. I was trying to come up on my turf. Not today, I say. Where you at, huh? Oh, oh, bobbing and weaving. Go give me your trident. Okay, we're not. Anyways, back to this though. So I'm gonna surround the entire thing with glass and create basically a little glass room. Bro, leave me alone. I didn't know I had so many drowns underneath my house. So many neighbors all of a sudden. Oh my gosh, my worst nightmare just came true again is that it's a two block. I made it a one block. So the room is going to be uh, all lopsided, basically. I need the staircase to just be one one block wide. That's all I need. I figured it out. Look, guys, I'm filming this in the morning. Haven't had my G fuel, by the way. There we go. Now we got our nice little room set up in here. Just need to add some more chests and some more hoppers. And then we should be good to go. The only other thing is I got to wait for their inventories to fill up, which is uh, taking longer than I remember. And I'm also going to need some sponges now to drain out all that water, which now means that we need to go on an adventure to get a sponge from an ocean monument and slay an elder guardian. So let's cook up some snacks for the road. Ooh, and then maybe I can get some apples real quick as well. Make some golden apples apples you just never know down underwater when i'm taking water damage i'm getting blasted by a fish i just say water damage i mean drowning i guess that is just water damage irl honestly and now that we got plenty of snacks golden apples and plenty of rockets i need to uh, find an ocean monument um the only one i know of is towards the stronghold and i don't feel like flying that far i'm kind of lazy there we go. Finally, we got an ocean monument, and it's actually literally right next door to the uh, Ozzy What's It's. Regardless, though, we're going to dive straight in. We're going to go in fast. And we're going to give this one the clapping. Ow, it hurts. That's right. Fight back. Fight back. Didn't think so. 
Anyways, and while I'm here, I might as well try to get a couple more, as long as I don't have to mine, because, I mean, for some reason, I haven't gotten miner's fatigue. Legendary. Show me the way. Oh, no, that's the front door. Why do these things gotta be shaped different every time? Oh, here we go. No! Oh, I thought I was gonna die. Can you? Thank you. Holy. I need, to, I need to get out of here now. There should only be one more Elder Guardian in this thing. And I know where bro is. Oh, wait. Actually, I could get gold while I'm here, too. Sheesh. Oh, no, I can't because miner's fatigue. I want to die, dude. But I do want the gold. No, I just realized I have no cows, which means I have no milk, which also... Oh, my God. No way we get a sponge room and I got mining fatigue. Just stop looking at me. I know. I'm upset too. How slow is it? Oh my god. It's pure pain. Okay, I need to get rid of the other Elder Guardian. That's why I need to. I just plugged up the hole. I hate myself. If I get rid of the other Elder Guardian, then I won't get mining fatigue anymore. The worst part is I like I know where he is. I just can't quite get to him. Like there's no path. Hold on, I think I'm cooking. Because I should be able to just go all the way around the walls, the outside wall. I saw it. Get out of my way, stupid. And the bro should be somewhere right here. Aha! Oh my gosh, there's a lot of fish in there. There we go. Oh, we got a... Uh, uh, smithing thing too the tide armor trim all right now we just gotta wait for the mining fatigue to go away and then we should be good and i can get all them spongies and now we just patiently wait for another Bruh. two minutes <sighs> two very boring minutes later and finally uh, now i can collect all of my sponges and we're rich i tell you rich in spongebiz Fun, fun, but SpongeBob. Now I just gotta make a break for it and get out of this place. This isn't the outside. Okay, okay, we gotta make a break. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Nice little hit and run. Let's just hope I'm going in the right direction. Now I got all my sponges. Let me smelt them all down, get all the water out of them. And now I can take all the water out of the little storage room for the potato thing. Now I just need them to start making taters. Come on, Papa getting hungry. We got a village to supply now also. Oh, hi, Mark. Wait, whoa, whoa, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where'd you come from? How'd you get out? He wants back in, clearly. Okay, whatever. I'll let you roam around. And now next thing on the agenda is base expansion. We've already been expanding the base a ton. And honestly, it's coming along. I like this like grid layout because now I'm going to start connecting it over there as well. I'm going to start going out that direction and then that direction and that direction. And basically doing this exact same like kind of uh, T or plus like shape. Plus sign. And now first things first, I'm going to need to get a bunch of stone for this. And now with all this newly acquired stone, we can finally expand out the base some more. And I got plenty of stone to the point that it, we shouldn't really need any for a, a long time while expanding the base. And there we go. So now here's my goal, all right? We're gonna basically fill most of this in with wood. Did you see something moving around over there? Hello. That's fish. So yeah, we're basically gonna fill most of this up with wood. My goal here is to move these things that are, you know, kind of just awkwardly sitting here and kind of give them some porpoise. Oh, I forgot to do a row of slabs right here. Hold up, two seconds. Anyways, as I was saying, I want to move those into an area that'll have a lot more purpose. Probably literally just move them back like right here or something. I want to create kind of like a smelting zone where I'm going to have like auto smelters and stuff. I'm talking sugarcane farm, big boy right there and not quite sure what we're putting here. But right here is going to be a mob farm. It's just the things I'm envisioning currently. And I'm going to need a lot of wood if I'm going to want to fill, fill in all that. That's that's, that's a, a lot of area. And now I can just fill this all in and I'll probably do a bit of a pattern also kind of like this. Yeah, less ugly like this, though, just so that, you know, it isn't just so brown. Break it up a little bit. Oh, this is gonna be painful, bro. I hate filling this in. 
someone want to come play Minecraft for me? Please? And there we go. Now we got the entire thing filled in. I decided to just leave this one as a little pool for now because, well, I can't quite think about what I want to do here. Do we just take this like chunk and go all the way down to bedrock? I don't know. You guys comment down below. What do we do with the pool? I guess I can make it an aquarium. Maybe raise it up. Hmm. Take the water and put it up there. I don't know. But like I said, what I do want to do for sure is move all this because it's really ugly with how everything's laid out over here. And I need to kind of fix all this. This is when resources were limited and I was uh, pretty broke. But now we're rich and prosperous. So I need to take the auto concretinator all down. And it's raining. Great. Just what I wanted. And also tear down the cobblestone generator. And then now I can build them back up over here. And like I said, what I want to try to do is kind of create a little outdoor like smithing area. What's going on over here? Got ourselves a wandering trader. Ooh, slime balls. That's pretty huge, actually. Coral, just what I need in an ocean world. Nautilus shell, which I want to say can be useful. And gunpowder, which is pretty random. I believe we got plenty of emeralds left over from when we were building up the beacon and we uh, miscalculated. <laughs> it was a good miscalculation, apparently. Definitely going to buy, what is it, eight of these? Oh, I could only buy five. That's all you'd give me? That's actually, you suck. Because if I got eight of these, then I could be able to build a conduit. But we already got five, so it's not too bad. Definitely going to pick up some slime. And again, only five. Is that how much you could sell? Let me see. Oh, no, you could go up to eight for gunpowder. I hate this guy. I'll take the green die. Sure. Anyways, before I was rudely interrupted by that guy, what I was about to say, though, is that we got ourselves our cobblestone generator set up right here like so. So then we're able to mine. Got a nice little window. You can be able to see the progress. Same thing with the auto concretinator over here. So I can place down concrete, mine it, etc. Got this nice little room back here for probably some storage stuff. But now what I want to do is build up a roof and set up some auto smelters. And I want to start off by outlining the roof. Hmm, maybe we make this a little bit taller. So now I'm going to outline the roofs with stone stairs. There we go. A little something like that all the way around it. Kind of vibing, except, yeah, I, I, um, yeah, I got to do the other side. So uh, there we go. Now that looks a lot better. What I want to try to do now is just kind of string along maybe some fences to go across or like walls, maybe a beam. I also had to add glass on top of the lava because uh, yeah, it burned down the roof twice while I was building it. But apparently glass just stops lava. I never knew that. I put regular blocks on top and it didn't work. So, oh, no, I don't need to destroy that. But now it's coming along. What I plan on doing is maybe this entire wall will probably just end up being uh, fences just to, you know, you'd be able to get a lot of light in here. And then in the middle, I'm going to have like four different auto smelters right here towering up. But first, let's get some spruce logs real quick. So then I can add kind of like a wooden beamed look for like support. Since this is like a, a really tall roof. There we go. That'll add some flavor. Hello? That'll add some flavor to the room. There we go. So fences are all there for the little bit of detail. Probably add some lanterns now that I think about it. Now that I'm thunking. But this is definitely coming along. Now to just set up some like auto smelters right here in the middle. I'll definitely have like uh, smokers and stuff like that. Oh, is this going to fit? Oh, this is also off center. Never mind. We're not doing this many. I could perhaps put it in this corner. But it technically does fit. I mean, I'm able to. Yeah. Honestly, there we go. Now we got our blast furnace and our smokers set up. So now actually in this corner, that's kind of cool. Actually, I kind of like that. Looks neat. I'm able to load them up and auto smelt away. Got some little countertops for decorative purposes. Speaking of decorative purposes, gotta add some lanterns in here. Maybe some like trap doors on the chest to hide them. Then maybe like a table in the middle or something like that. The next time I find a map, I can add the map to the table. 
just a nice little schnazzy addition. Otherwise, this should work for our little outdoorsy smelting zone, along with also our auto concreteinator and our cobblestone generator. And now we're kind of left with this mess. So, um... I gotta clean this up now. The next day. And there we go. Now this whole thing looks cohesive and intentional. <laughs> Our base is really coming together in a very nice way. And I already know that a bunch of people are gonna be like, oh, Paul and his spruce and stone. It's just the best combo, guys. What's what's a better combo than this? Please tell me. And you better not say birch because I'm gonna get upset. <laughs> Anyways, time for the next project, which I'm gonna build up, like I said, a sugarcane farm right here, which I'm gonna need a decent bit of redstone for it for making observers, pistons, and I just need redstone dust and I've been kind of avoiding it like the plague for some reason when I go mining uh, and then also I'm gonna need it for the mob farm uh yeah I need a lot of uh redstone actually and so we must set off to go find some new caves because I'm tired of caving directly underneath the base and not really finding anything juicy and new ideally I'm just gonna try to fly into these giant openings and hope they take me somewhere Ooh, diamonds <laughs> Say less. Oh, I forgot I got silk touch on. And it appears that my uh, fortune pick is dying. No worries. I should have plenty of mending books. I could just slap it on there. Oh, and actually, I want to move this into the, the smithing zone. I feel like it just makes more sense over here. But now that we got mending on this thing, time to go heal it up at the Enderman farm, of course. Oh my. Ah! Ah! <laughs> And now we should be good to go to get plenty of redstone. I also realized that apparently I um, don't have mending on my sword or my silk touch pick. Don't know why. I have plenty of mending books. And now that I got the fortune, I can finally mine my diamonds. And it actually just gives me one of each. Awesome. Um, regardless, back to caving. Oh, wow. Literally more diamonds the second I get inside the same cave that I was in earlier. Yo, mind if I you and lapis, lazuli, a lot of iron. Show me the woodstone. Oh, we got a cave entrance. Oh, zombie villager. Too bad I don't need you anymore. I'm sorry, buddy. Here we go. Here's that juicy, glowy stone that I want. I, I need a whole lot more of it. Hold on. Hold on. I hold up. Oh wait, hold up. Actually, hold up. Yo, leave me alone. Get away from me. No. No. I also need to get rid of this creeper. I don't want the creeper blowing up the chimkin. If you guys are OGs of my first season of Minecraft Hardcore, we had a chicken in the world named Chickpea. And little Chickpea was very important to the series, and I would love to save this chicken from being blown up by creepers. Oh, oh, it's getting dicey. Oh, it's spicy. <laughs> That chicken better not despawn, though. I'm going to be very upsetty Paschetti. Also, yeah, this cave is uh, something, isn't it? And chicken is gone. He's gone. Unless he fall. Nope. Awesome. I love to see it. Just so happens when chicken spawns, 500 different mobs spawn, and they want to ruin everything. So this, I also need to get a name tag, so I just got it on hand, you know, primed and ready to give to the first chicken I see. Still looking around like I'm in denial. He's got to be around here somewhere. Well, we just got to hope that another chicken jockey spawns at some point. Otherwise, we are screwed. We'll be forever alone in this vast ocean world. Hey, at least I got diamonds. <laughs> I'm definitely going to have to mark this cave down like with a marker up in the ocean because like this thing is juicy. I mean, look, there's literally a, a spider spawner out in the open right there. Which now that I think about, it, I do need to make a spider spawner because we're not getting any mobs spawning in on like our big grass areas inside the base or maybe they're just not big enough it's usually passive mob spawn if you create like a nice big green area and we're not getting any sheepers which is kind of worrying so the next best thing is to make a string farm from spiders and this would be the best location considering i don't got to do as much mining to get all the uh the setup for it Ooh, and an iron vein too this cave just keeps giving baby holy crap wait what i'm so confused this iron vein is all up right here over the roof to there and then also down over there and over here i'm dude this thing is huge if i oh potato if i ever need iron ever again um yeah that's the place to get it i guess but that's for future paul problems because right now current paul needs to get more redstone still why is this so many zombies always spawn together i hate it. what hold on there's literally no way well i need to get him away from the lava I need a name tag. I could put him in a boat. That don't, 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 don't. Yeah, we're going this way now. We're going this way. Don't worry about it. Okay, I need to be very careful that I don't 
shoot the chicken. There we go. Okay, we should be fine. Hey, 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 hey. Bro, start going in the lava. Okay, 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 okay. We got chickpea in a boat. Shouldn't despawn this way. But now I need to get up to the surface. Oh my gosh, dude, there's so many mobs. It's gonna be so hard to get him up to the surface. I, I need to go get a name tag from home though. Also, priority number one. So he should be fine right there. We start digging up. And let's set up a marker here. Make our way home real quick. Buy up a name tag from Trippy Pimpin. Of course, got to throw down the classic chickpea because his legacy lives on, apparently. And now begins Operation Save That Chimpkin. I'm going to get some coal real quick so that I could craft up a ton of torches and essentially just torch spam literally everywhere. I want as little mobs to be able to spawn as possible. And there we go. Now this cave should be brighter than my future and there shouldn't be any more mobs spawning at least near chickpea. So I got to do this very carefully. Am I able to give you the name tag now? Yes, I can. Okay. I need to turn on hitboxes real quick so I make sure I don't hit them. Or oh yeah, it's this corner. There we go. I got some seeds, brother. And now all we got to do is take them all the way back up to the surface. Uh, it's just like old times, isn't it, chickpea? Me and you versus the world. I'm no longer alone. <laughs> all right, chickpea. This is this is where you got to have your come up. All right, my boy. You don't got to swim up that high. Just be careful. Come on. Up, up. Rise up, rise up. And he makes it, of course. Now we're just going to hop in the brown pearl and set sail for home. All right, come on up, chickpea. You can do it. This is your brand new home. All right, get up on the land. Come on now. You can do it. There you go. No, not back in the water. You're not a duck. No, where are you going? Oh my gosh. Okay, this chickpea, um, he's not the brightest, but uh, he'll do, he'll do. I just need to keep him safe. Look, why you, why you keep doing that? I just need to keep him safe inside the house for now, and we'll eventually build him up his own house. Guys, comment down below. What kind of house do we build him? Do we build him his own ship or, like that he can be able to live in? Or do I upgrade mine and I give him this one? Can you get in the house? I got a better idea. I'm just gonna put him on a lead. Drag him in. And there we go. I'll tie him up right there. Alrighty. And now that chickpea is finally rescued, we can get back to working on the base, which like I said, I want to build up a big sugarcane farm because I'm tired of having to scrounge together rockets. By that, I'd rather just everything be automated. Yeah, let me be lazy a little bit. Come on now. And for the sugarcane farm, one thing I do want to make sure I get is some grass blocks because inside of the farm, I don't want it to look like Doo -doo dirt. It's like one of those weird picky things, but trust me, it'll look better this way. Future Paul here to interrupt Paul from the past that's just mining dirt mindlessly with a silk touch pick. And I'm here to tell you guys about G Fuel's BOGO deal for Black Friday. It is literally the biggest deal they do all year round. So when you buy one tub, you get one free, but that's not all because they also added some very limited edition tubs that are like black light and glow in the dark, which just makes for a beautiful addition to the collection. And that's not all because you guys could also get yourself a Paul GG shaker cup because shaker cups are also on sale right now. So make sure you guys use my special link down in the description. Go pick up some G Fuel. Now all we need to do is kind of map this thing out. There we go. Now we kind of got everything mapped out in a way that'll work. Sugarcane will be on this grass block right here. Then there'll be pistons. And then, of course, there'll be observers that when the, the sugarcane grows, it'll chop it. You guys know the whole spiel. However, we got the little water channels that'll then be flowing it down into what will be another water channel right here. Oh, except uh, it merges the water. Hold on, might have a solution for this because I should be able to just put a gate like right there and even though it gets rid of one of the water blocks it should still carry enough momentum that if i were to just like drop something in the water and it reaches to the next water nice and then now i could be able to set up like a nice a little hopper chest system right here so that basically all the sugar cane will get fed into the hopper And now all I need to do is add in all these pistons like so, along with some observers on top of them. And just for the sake of testing this to make sure that it works. Nope. Mm. 
Now that's what I was worried about, because I think what I need to do is place a block on the back side. Oop, not that block. On the back side of the piston and then put redstone on top. But then that makes it so that all this needs to move back or vice versa. Everything needs to move forward. And that's going to hurt. All right, let's see. Moment of truth. Is that how it works? I found the sugar cane and yep, that's what I thought. All right, now I got to rebuild this thing. I'm going to hit myself in the head with one of these pistons. There we go. Now we should be good to go. I had to rebuild this thing entirely like a couple blocks forward, but now it's done right. All I need to do is set up all the pistons. And now all that's left is to plant down all the sugar. Nani? I can't plant sugar cane on this last one. I realize that now because the fence is there blocking the water from touching the block, which actually doesn't apply to this one because the water is touching the B side. So it's just this one technically that isn't going to be working. Oh, and it's the one in the front that drives me insane. Then again, no, it all works out in the end. I'm stupid. I'm rambling. I'm waffling. Ignore me. The fences aren't even needed here because this water isn't even attaching to there. It, yeah, I'm stupid. Now let's just give this thing a quick test. Kachuga, yeah, it's never going to be 100% lossless. However, that's the best uh, it's going to be able to get. And now at least we have a fully functional sugarcane farm. Probably just going to slap a glass roof on top of it, though. And technically, we could build this thing up even more. So come the day that we need more sugarcane, we shall. And now with our sugarcane farm completely out of the way, we just got to give this thing some time and it'll start pumping out plenty of sugarcane for us. In the meantime, got to begin building up our next projects. Starting off with actually, I want to expand on this iron farm here because it's just, um, it's not really working for me in many different ways. So, and since we already have an auto potato farm, I'm going to move all these taters into my mouth and I'm going to rip up all the flooring. And actually what I want to do, hmm, I want to keep this because like I want to make the entire thing dirt all the way throughout this in hopes that maybe if I if I put down grass that the grass will grow and if this is a big enough section to let mobs spawn because I know in Minecraft if you have a big grassy green area passive mobs can spawn but obviously coarse dirt isn't the kind of dirt that I need right here and I just need regular dirt so I have to shovel it and then put it all back. I guess I could just place dirt on top of the dirt to then make the coarse dirt turn into dirt dirt. And then I no longer have to shovel the dirt back into dirt. This is dirt 101. And now I'm foreseeing a potential problem with this is that choking on air again is that this is going to take up a lot of dirt and it's not that i have a limited amount of dirt it's just that if i want to get dirt in this world usually it's underneath the water and it's not fun or damn it I'm trying to fly struggling we just keep taking dirt from dirt island one of the very few islands we've ever found in this world which i don't want to completely decimate this entire thing and also technically this is a nice big green area that mobs could spawn on also however i don't hang out around here enough so i'm probably just not giving them time you know really hoping that's all it is <laughs> so the only other alternative method is that i need to basically duplicate dirt by combining it with gravel to make coarse dirt and it gives me a lot more the problem with it is is that well it's coarse dirt and coarse dirt you have to like hoe it or shovel it or something because otherwise it's just coarse dirt so let's see coarse oh yeah so if you just hoe it it just turns it back into regular dirt perfect that's what i thought then i'll just place down all the coarse dirt and then i'll hoe it around yeah, that dirt's been around i'm gonna brag about it though And someone remind me to never be environmentally conscious in Minecraft again. Duplicating dirt kind of blows. And I hoe the dirt and then I d then this thing happens and then I got to redo it again. And so what if I spend diamonds on a hoe? You want to find me about it? I don't know. Oh, that is the rule number one of Minecraft. You never spend diamonds on a hoe. That's facts. I knew I was going to have to put some miles on this thing.
There we go. Now all we got to do is basically just wait for the grass to finish growing. And then we should have a nice big area that we could be able to one, build up some more iron farms on and two, hopefully some passive mobs will spawn on. But in the meantime, I got some other plans. What I want to work on now is actually making this feel more like a village that the villagers could actually survive in. By survive, I mean just kind of uh, be locked away in here and never be bothered. But uh so I'm going to start off with basically creating... Oh, well, I guess I want fences here. I want gates. I need to basically close up everything oh, so that you no know, villagers get out. But I forgot we got a one wandering villager. Fine, you're going to the next iron farm, buddy. I need to make sure that basically all these cracks and crevices are not accessible for villagers to be able to sneak out. Also, what's this cat doing in the brown pearl? I didn't approve of this. And now it should be safe to let them just freely roam around over here. And what I want to do is probably just set up all their jobs in like one area, just so I don't really got to hunt them down. And I'm definitely going to need to move around these beds. Well, actually, you know what? Let's leave this place like an apartment complex. We'll just crack up some new beds we should have plenty of string after all we put spider-man in the dirt and i'll definitely add some beds into the other houses and finally make sure hey everyone why are you sleeping Dude, this guy's got that right kind of energy. Anyways, I need to make sure everyone's loaded up on taters so they can start pumping out more villagers. And now while those villagers are putting in that work for me, I'll be putting in work over here, building up more iron farms and actually moving this one over. They need to be like eight blocks away from each other, I believe. But while also I need to keep it away from this village, because if these villagers over here sense other villagers over here, like they're too close to them, iron golems will start spawning in the middle. And that's why I was thinking about expanding the land even more and putting iron farms somewhere else, but we're going to try it here first. I'm going to first try to like map this whole thing out just to make sure that these things can be eight blocks away, which it appears that they can be, which by my calculations, that means that we should be able to easily fit four of them over here. But now my first challenge is going to be to move these villagers over here, basically. And so I'm going to start off by building up the little platform that they're going to be standing on. I got to do this fast because I don't want those iron golems spawning anywhere else. And now I'll build like a little bridge over here. I forgot I need windows. Excuse me while I take your windows. <laughs> also, feel free to start making your way over there. I'm going to take your beds. But you know what? I should definitely build like safety walls for this. I already know they're going to fall off. Oh, there we go. Oh, and iron golem. Um, not quite what's supposed to be happening. So you could just get out of here. Thank you. Here, guys, all your beds are over here now. Whoa, crazy. I know. Cavalry is coming through wait we have one extra villager that we need hey, will you still stay over here out of my way there we go now we got the villagers moved into their new pod slightly to the side i should really get rid of this guy oh no nope. step off brother you don't want on this block trust me you don't <laughs> And now time for the most annoying and time consuming part, which is the villagers. I promised this guy he would be the first one to be working up there. And I have an idea for this. What I wanna do is essentially build up a staircase that'll just connect to all of them. Oh, well, I guess I forgot that this one's already full. So uh, either way, we'll just connect all three of these. Now, essentially, I just need two villagers per chamber, and then they'll do the rest of the work for me. I need him to sense this job. Uh, might be a little too far. Not like this, buddy. There you go. Yeah, you smell that hard work. Mr. Labor Man pulling up. And yeah, now you want this next one, don't you? Yep, that's what I thought. You ain't expecting there to be a third. Sheesh, say less. No, I'm in the hole. And now I just gotta do that, uh, yeah, a bunch more times. One debt to society later. And there we go. Now we finally got all the pods all set up. They are loaded up on potatoes, but it looks like they uh, might have thrown some up and, and got it stuck. That's great. But regardless, though, they're all doing the deed, having the babies. And now we're just waiting for more iron golems. We're going to be filthy, stinking rich, I tell you. Now, finally, with all the iron farms done and out of the way, the next thing that I want to work on actually is going to finally be a gigantic mob farm, which I've been talking about putting it over here for quite a while now. And I've just been procrastinating building it because, well, 
Yeah, I really don't want to. But also, I was going to need a lot of hoppers for it, which that means I'm going to need a lot of iron, which means these guys got to start cranking out that iron for me because all the mobs are going to be pretty high in the sky. And when they come raining down, they kind of like separate and spread out, which is no bueno. And of course, it's going to start raining. I feel like it rains too much in this world. But essentially, I'm going to have all the chests right here. Probably put some more down below these ones just for extra storage. And again, because usually these farms, they fill up pretty fast. Maybe we do even more chests. <laughs> There we go. Now that should be plenty of storage because we got chests. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Wait a second. We got our very first villager patrol or pillage, pillager, illager patrol. It only took, you know, 255 days, even though the sun's setting. Hold on, boys. I'll come get you in the morning when it's not raining. You know, here, I want to get that bad omen before it like, what if they despawn? <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Got that bad omen, baby. Oh, this just derailed my plans. Let the raid begin. Oh my gosh, they're spawning on land. This is no bueno. I was hoping that they're going to spawn in the ocean because if they did, then it would have been free. The villagers should be safe, though, because they're behind fences over there. And there we go. Next wave commencing. Hmm, I wonder if I could try to, like, force them to spawn in the ocean. I don't know. They just keep spawning at my house, bro. That's not your house. Oh, my gosh. There's a ravager. Bro, so dumb. Hello? Ain't even moving. He's just taking it. Oh, one of them just went to the nether. Dead. Wait, what? He went in the nether and it counted as, like, him dying, I guess. Oh, big, big wave. And there's witches this time. Good thing I got OP bow. Makes it way easier to take care of all these guys. I think these guys are confused. They're like... Where's the village? There wouldn't be any villages out here. What are we pillaging? <laughs> oh, and oh, oh, that's not good. Bye, have a great time. Bro, the guy went into the nether and then immediately spawned another wave right on me. Except they tried chasing me into the water and now they look stupid. That Ravager is so upset. He's like, man, you're so lucky. There's all this dumb water in the way. And this wave finally has evokers. So this means that I will be getting some totems unless the totems fall in the lava because for some reason they love hanging out next to that lava. Or call me Chris Kyle. I'm putting in that work right now. Oh no, he fell in the lava. See, this is what I was talking about. Why are they hanging out next to the lava? The evoker, the one mob that I didn't want to end up in the lava falls in the lava. Okay, next wave spawned in the same spot. I wonder if I could like lure them into the water again, you know, like this. I just bring them on over here and then maybe they follow me. Nope, they just, they just stopped. They gave up. They're like, nah, man. And he fell in the lava again. I'm over it. And then they all jump out of there. Like, they're like, oh, yeah, lava bad. And maybe we don't hang out next to that. There's not going to be a single totem. Because the, the very few evokers that did spawn are falling into lava. All right, new plan. Oh, actually, they spawned over here now. Perfect. Just going to continue bowing down almost all of them. Oh, evoker. That's not good. All right, I need to get rid of this evoker right here. Got rid of him before he could even spawn anything. Oh, no, I need to get rid of this ravager before he gets on land. Come on. There we go. Okay, where'd that other evoker go? Are they killing my, my villagers? Do vexes go after villagers? I hope not. Oh, here we go. Got our first totem. Throw that bad boy on. Not that we're ever going to really need it. Let's be honest. Oh my gosh. There's like a million vex over there. Hi, how are you? Oh, what's up, dog? Trying to catch these hands. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's getting a little dicey. Let's give them some breathing room. I think I pulled aggro because no matter how far they are, they still want to get to me. Oh, but I'm just nuts with this bow, brother. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh my gosh, Triton drown too. What the <laughs> heck? Oh, bro. That does so much damage for no reason. Okay, and there's still vexes on me. Triton drown is the most broken thing, I swear. Oh, we're done. We finished the raid. Let me get this other totem. Bruh. Ow. And now I get puffer fished? Bro, give me a break. I'm gonna sleep now that there's tons of mobs everywhere and it's nighttime. Okay, I need to collect all my rewards everywhere. Take my saddles for all the things that I can't saddle up on. All right, I think I've looted pretty much everything important. Maybe there's a couple emeralds here and there. Oh wait, another totem. So now we got three in total. And I also got Hero of the Village, which I need to take advantage of that. I would love to be able to build up an emerald beacon, a fully emerald one. So I think we're going to have to pause building up our giant mob farm so that then we can be able to take advantage of the opportunity here. Wait, what the heck? I hear a villager taking damage. What is happening? What are you doing? Why are you jumping off this? He's like panicking and then falling again. <laughs> Ha. Ha. Ha.
That's it. I blocked it. It was like stuck in a loop forever. But it seems like all the villagers are here. They're all doing their hair. I don't think I lost any of them, which is perfect because I need emeralds. So to start off, I'm going to get a ton of wood real quick. Here, you know what? Let's make this go by a little bit faster. I'm going to go ahead and get haste two out of the beacon. This feels the exact same. And now I take all this wood and begin the great trading. And we just spam tons and tons of trades, making tons and tons of money. And finally, much trades later, we are done and over with. By that, I mean, we don't even have the hero of the village anymore. But however, they were giving me gifts also. They're telling me how amazing I was and that they're giving me these cool arrows. It was pretty cool. But not to mention, though, they gave me a lot of emeralds. We got like, what, uh, 11 stacks and a little bit over. Plus the emeralds we got at home. So you could say we're rolling in it. <sighs> Now, next thing I need to do for an emerald beacon is, well, make a beacon. So we got to slay a bunch of wither skellies. But before we even do that, I do need to add some mending books onto some of my gear that I completely keep forgetting to do so, like my sword. So let's just sauce that on there. And all this stuff should basically just heal up over time while I'm slaying the wither skellies. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I literally just went through that portal and I forgot all the stupid pillagers that are over there or they're still down there. Or if I didn't have a totem, it would have been over actually. Holy crap. Okay, well, first things first, I'm going to get rid of these guys. I need payback. Oh, uh, that's for show. There we go. I shouldn't have to worry about those guys anymore. And there goes one of our totems, unfortunately. Regardless, now it is time to begin chopping down a bunch of withers in the Soul Sand Valley. <laughs> Ow, I already get hit two seconds into this. Oh, first weather skull, W mans. Many more to go. <laughs> Oh, two and three back to back, bro. What the heck? Looting going crazy right now. Yo, can we get a can we get a third? Oh, never mind. All right. Two in a row though, we'll take it. Because now we got three, and it is time to slay the wither boss. Which of course we're gonna cheese this thing in the end again. I mean, I'll just take a free beacon, you know. If I don't gotta work for it, then nice. There we go. Now to just craft up my beacon. And now placement of this thing. I've been thinking about where to put my beacons recently. And I realized a really good spot is in the water in between each base. Like build out a little bridge, put it like dead center of the water. I think it would be aesthetic, but also reach the farthest amount being in between the two walkways. So like this one, I would also move over there. And so now I just need to figure out basically the center of this thing. A lot of boring math later. So bad news, it's pretty much an even block. So that means that there's a two block center. So we're gonna go as centered as possible. Which the most center it's gonna be is right here. So the beacon's gonna go directly right there. There's a wandering trader outside actually. And this guy's got ooh, ice. Ice is pretty useful, but we need emeralds for that. And I'm using all my emeralds, sir. I'm sorry. But like I said, we do have enough emeralds to cover the entire outside of it. So we can definitely make it look like we got an emerald beacon. I figured the inside will just fill it up with iron, which I mean, now's a good chance to obviously check on the iron farms. I haven't been cooking up for too long, but I might be able to get a handful of blocks out of this. So all the iron from the iron farm definitely gives us a little bit to work with. But unfortunately, we still need more. Which, if you recall earlier, we did find a cave. Come on, let me in. Come on. That had a huge iron vein in it. So now I can just mine up all this iron that we found earlier. And this will definitely be enough iron. This is probably going to give me like, I don't know, like eight stacks of iron if I mine it all. Now all I need to do is schmelt all this iron down. And now that definitely got us a decent bit more blocks. So we should be able to finish this thing off. 
Look, if anyone asks, guys, uh, we all know there's no iron underneath this. We all know that. Because why would there be? There we go. Now we got our full emerald beacon. <clears throat> Right? We do got one emerald block left over. So I might as well ooh, oh, buy some ice off of this guy. I'm going to build another little pathway on the other side of the beacon. Attaching to this side. Merely for the aesthetics, of course. How do I always have so many drowns underneath the base? There we go. That's looking pretty aesthetic. Definitely going to move the other beacon now also. Now, finally, with the beacon stuff all out of the way, it's time to finish up with this mob farm once and for all. So I need to basically create a platform for all the mobs to land on, which is going to need to be bigger than that. And now I'm basically going to have to build up at least like 25 to 30 blocks ish because I need the mobs to die directly on impact. This should be high enough. And then now I basically need to build out like a three by three square right here in the middle. Wait, did I say a three by three? I actually meant a five by five. And then I need to build out basically seven blocks in each direction and then just fill it all in just like that. And then essentially just need to build a glass wall all the way around it. And we'll come back to this platform in a second, because now what I need to do is build up two blocks, place down a dispenser, and then build out basically a big platform all the way around this thing. Just seven blocks in each direction. Then fill it all in. And now all I need to do is place down three blocks and then an observer face in the sky like that. Or well, technically it's facing downward and then slap a dispenser on top of him and do the same thing over and over and over again. This is uh, this is going to be a while. How about we just skip to the good part when it's done? And now finally, at long last, we have our mob farm that I actually messed up now that looking at it from this angle. Um, the roof technically isn't long enough to go all the way over there. I need to add like one more row. However, it is fully functional. Mobs are about to start raining down any second now. Please. Thank you. Ah, here they come. Some spoders. Actually, just a bunch of spiders. What the heck? And basically, mobs will just keep on spawning. And we just keep on looting all the way at the very tippity top. We got ourselves a redstone clock. Basically triggering off the farm every so often. Now, they're not all really in sync because, well, the clock was going while some of the buckets were being placed into the dispensers. However, all the mobs do fall into this pool of water here, where then they fall into their impending doom. And now, this thing's definitely going to be worth it because now I'm going to have an infinite supply of gunpowder and resources like i can start selling rotten flesh also to the brew boy villagers and make a lot of money that way as well and i mean that thing felt like it took forever to build we're already on day 294 and i mean it probably took forever because i had to keep stopping to get stone then i also you know Bruh. had a couple afk days no big deal just kind of procrastinating building this now we don't have very many days left in this 100 days so i want to spend the rest of my time flying around and attempting to make Make a conduit because that's something that could be pretty valuable in an ocean world and so to build a conduit i'm gonna need a lot of nautilus shell things and to get those i gotta slay a bunch of drowns so let the drown slaying commence where are they at dude <laughs> guys i'm here to pillage your village oh there you are i mean nautilus shells not stupid copper no one likes dumb copper there's no use for it come on minecraft step up your game copper golem would have been sick just keep swimming just keep swimming just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. Now, I hate to have a really anticlimactic finish. However, we are already on day 300. The sun has set and I only have all the Nautilus shell things and I don't have the heart of the sea. I couldn't find the heart of the sea anywhere. And then it made me start thinking and Googling that apparently you can get out of buried treasures. Now, I don't know if buried treasures also includes the treasures found um, inside like the, the drowned cities or not. But if it means buried treasures in general, then yeah, we're kind of screwed and we can't get one. Regardless though, that's 
that's gonna be it for this video guys if you enjoyed it make sure you guys hit that like button hit subscribe also comment down below what do we build for chickpea because he deserves the world also don't forget to check out the plushie link down in the description and i will see you guys in the next one